stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick. And this week, I'm back as a solo podcaster once again to talk about the topic that is on everybody's mind, but maybe you don't really want to talk about it, but it is NVIDIA and actually making the case for why you should be buying the stock right here. I fought with a lot of people on Twitter about this in recent weeks, which is kind of interesting because for those of you who don't know, I'm Zach's value stock strategist. So it seems a little bit uh, weird, I guess you could say, that I would be arguing with people who are saying you should not be buying NVIDIA right here, that it's overvalued or whatever other reason they're giving for not buying it here. And I'm the value stock strategist saying, hmm, maybe there is a case for actually buying it here, even with the incredible rally that it's already had here in 2024. So if you haven't been following it or the AI stock story, then maybe you don't know that NVIDIA is actually up 91% year to date here in 2024 when I'm recording this in March of 2024. And it's had a big run over the last year since the entire AI type of revolution with its new AI chips have really taken off. I would say that was in just basically the last year. So in that year time period, it's had quite a run as well. Let me look up 254% during that time period. So that's been pretty hot. And over the last five years, NVIDIA, even before the AI, when it just had its great gaming chips and some of its other products, the stock is now up 2,000% in the last five years. So that is red hot. And again, I've been arguing with people, why should you buy NVIDIA here? It's had this big run. And how can it keep going higher? Um, what is the uh, you know catalyst that could drive it higher? Because we've kind of seen a little bit of a a topping of the stock now that it's reported earnings again, and all of that is priced in. Uh, it's taken a pause, but can it move even higher here? Should you be in it? So the number one thing I like to look at as the value stock strategist. Um, and just a long-term investor, because I am talking about actually investing in NVIDIA, not trading it. So those are two different things, which I should do a podcast on shortly so we can discuss it in depth. But this is actually buying it as an investment. And I know we've done many podcasts here about whether or not it's too late to buy some of these stocks. My work colleague did a po- uh, not a podcast, just a video about uh, whether or not it was too late to buy super microcomputer ticker SMCI, which is also one of the AI stocks and is in partnership with NVIDIA on the AI side. And so we've taken a look at this uh, idea from like a technical standpoint by looking at the charts and trying to figure out if the momentum is still there and if there can be a run up by looking at the fibs or, um, you know, even just like the 50 and 200 day moving averages. So I'm not going to look at any of those technical indicators because that's not how I like to invest. Uh, I will glance at the chart, of course, and I love listening to the commentary of my uh, colleagues on the charts and what those are telling us. But I like to look at the fundamentals. And this is the area where I've had the discussion the most with people on Twitter and stock twits about the fundamentals. So let's take a look at it. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can get the video podcast on our YouTube channel. Just go to zax.com slash YouTube to get it. Uh, but if you're listening, I'm going to try to describe what it is I'm showing everybody who's watching it on YouTube. So I've just gone to the, the NVIDIA page on Zax.com. You can see right off the top, at the top, it is a Zax number one rank, which is the strong buy. It does have this F under the style scores for value. So not surprising because I'm not here on this podcast arguing that it's an actual value stock right here. 
But I am going to argue that there is value to be found in these shares still and that it's not over, you know, overvalued or stretched on a valuation basis, given what's actually going on in the underlying business with both sales and even earnings side of things. So you can also see in the style scores, is it has a B for growth, a B for momentum, and a C on its overall score because the value score is the F. <laughs> it's the lowest that it is like your, your school grades, A, B, C, D, and F. And so F is is what you don't want to be. Um, but again, nobody's saying that this is a value. So if I'm evaluating this and I have been, I, I do look at the forward PE. Here it is a 39. That's why it's not a value under classic value parameters um, because 39 is nowhere close to classic value. Classic value is 15 or under. You may go as high as 20, but it's mostly 15 and under. Some people like to get dirt cheap, which would be 10 and under for the forward PE. So 39 is not it. But historically, NVIDIA has traded much higher valuation than this PE of 39. It's traded well over 44 years, like a decade, um, as high as 50, 60 times in the last decade. And so this feels actually kind of cheap for me for NVIDIA when I see it at only 39. Um, so I would like to um, look at the detailed estimates page because that's where I go to look when I'm looking for a long-term investment to see what is going on with the earnings estimates right now for this year and for next year. We have this fiscal year and next fiscal year for NVIDIA. And uh, just... Uh, I scroll down and we have the sales estimates. Let's start there because a lot of people have been arguing about the sales and they've been arguing for the last year. Now, when the AI revolution first started last year and the sales jumped, a lot of people questioned it. A lot of people questioned whether or not there wasn't some kind of shenanigans going on because nobody's ever really seen a company of this size grow its sales this quickly um, year over year. Like it just, it really doesn't happen. But we now have data in for three and four different quarters. And we're going into the second year of this new uh, business stream that's really working for NVIDIA. And so it's getting a little harder to say, hey, there's something else going on here when they keep doing this quarter after quarter. So I like to look at the sales and you can see fiscal 2025, expecting it to be up again, 72.5% for this fiscal year. Now, last year they made 60.9 billion and the Zach's consensus is looking for 105 for this year. The low estimate is at 96, but the high is at 113 billion. So that's where we're getting the 105. We have 12 estimates in. So that's pretty dramatic once again. And then even for next fiscal year, you can see another 18.7%. And the um, it's going to go off of last year's estimate. But we have the consensus up at $124 billion. So from 105 this year to 124 Now, this is just the consensus. Nobody knows if they're actually going to do that. The only number that is actual is a year ago sales of $60.9 billion. So that's a number that we can count on. Everything else is just the analyst estimates on what is going to happen here. But these are some really impressive numbers, and it's still going on year after year. We're still expecting to see this massive sales growth. Now, what about earnings? We only know last year's numbers. So they made $12.96 last year, expected to make $23.80 this year. And a lot of this is off of the company's guidance. Um, but again, this is not set in stone and may not be correct. Uh, that's a gain of 83.6%. And then it slows a bit for next year so far. The analysts are still bullish with 14.3%, but we're looking at 2720. And again, that's up from 2380. 
but still impressive given that we're seeing this huge jump in earnings just this year alone. (laughs) So um, all these things are impressive. Now, scrolling down, the analysts are pretty much in agreement, and some are even raising in the last seven days. That's probably after the developers conference that NVIDIA held, where CEO Jensen Wong was out giving interviews and talking up what is happening in the business, announcing partnerships with other companies, So some of the analysts are still seeing even more bullishness coming down the pike and two estimates are raised both for this year and next year on the earnings side. Um, Nobody has cut after this conference. So that's a positive thing. Now, all of this is kind of in the short term. We can only look at this year and next year, and these are just estimates. So, um, you know, as a longer term investor, This is all we can go on, really, is what the company is saying, what the analysts are seeing, and then we wait for the quarterly earnings reports. Now, let's see what it looks like on the price of consensus chart. This is my favorite chart. We have shown this on the podcast numerous times in the last couple of months because how can you not? This is, you know, a very unusual chart where you're just kind of having slow and steady growth and then it's really taken off. But you can see 2023, which is already in the books here, and it took off and um, now we're expecting this bigger growth in 2024 and then the 14% again in 2025. This meanwhile, the shares have taken off. So a lot of people on Twitter argue you can't rely on any of this. Any of the numbers they're getting are so shocking and the gains are so swift that none of it is a reliable indicator. So we don't really know what the valuation is. We don't really know that it's trading at 39 times because all of this could end in a split second is what they argue. But maybe we should be looking at some of their partners to kind of see what's going on there. That gives us another layer of information because um, as NVIDIA's business changes, so will they, which they admit that they're in the partnership. So I'm going to look at Super Micro Computer, even though we've looked at it on this podcast a lot recently. And uh, my colleague, Dave Bartosiak, did that excellent video here on YouTube about it as well. So Super Micro Computer, it's also a Zach's number one. It has style scores of Fs all across the board. That's somewhat unusual as well to have the number one here, the strong buy, but it's failed on all the style scores. So it's already telling you something unusual is going on with Super Micro. Forward PE of 48. Now we don't have the same kind of historical look back on Super Micro because the earnings have really just taken off in the last year. And so I can't really say, um, you know, 10 years ago it was trading at this level. So this seems good. So that is high um, on a forward PE, but let's take a look so that we can kind of see what's happening with its sales. Is it similar to NVIDIA? You would think so because they're in partnership. So last year, their sales were 7.1 billion. This year expected to be 14.5 and they're on the fiscal year. So they're about halfway through the year already. Um, So that's Dramatic, 103.5% gain in sales. Again, you normally don't see things like this. That's why there's all these questions. That's why the questions about valuations and whether or not this stock has just rallied too much too soon. And I'm not talking about Supermicro. I'm still talking about NVIDIA. But um, you could ask these same questions about Supermicro too. Um, But year-over-year growth for next year, also up 26% to $18.2 billion. That's uh, in line, but a little bit uh, stronger than what we've seen with the analyst expectations on NVIDIA. And then looking at earnings, this looks similar as well, up 83% this fiscal year and another 31% next year, up from 1181 to 2171, and then uh, 2860 for next year. So from 2171 to 2860, none of this is written in stone, obviously. 
Uh, far fewer analysts cover super micro. We only have two estimates right now, and they're up just in the last 60 days. So they have not increased them since NVIDIA has kind of gone on a road show, so to speak, at their developers conference. And so we haven't seen any analysts getting even more bullish here, but they're also not cutting. So that's why you get the Zach's number one rank still. And, um, you know, you've got the agreement, but we are seeing the same similar sales growth in the partners that we've seen with NVIDIA. And that's what I'm trying to confirm is whether or not, you know, this is sustainable. Is it for real? And is it sustainable? And so the only way is to look at some of these partners. Another one you could look at is Vertiv, ticker VRT. They have They've just entered into the partnership like officially with NVIDIA, but they have been partnered for quite some time and they've been riding the wave of the AI over the last year as well. So I own this in my own personal portfolio and in Zach's value investor because a year ago it did have much more value type of, uh, you know, uh, fundamentals. PE now is at 34. I think when we bought it, it was at like 17 or 18 times. So the stock has soared on Vertiv as well. And one year it's up 526% now. Um, we did not get in at the very bottom of, of that <laughs> in, in the value investor or in my own personal portfolio. But this is another one along with Supermicro that's up 865% in the last year. These types of AI stocks are the ones where you're like, what is the case for me buying in right now? So looking at Vertiv, its growth on the uh, sales side is not nearly as strong as the other two. So just expecting 11% sales growth this year from 6.8 billion to 7.6 billion, and then just 9% next year. So that's a little bit less of the growth, we're not seeing the same kind of pattern as NVIDIA or Supermicro. But on the earnings side, looking pretty bullish, up 32% for 2024. They made 177 a year ago, expecting to make 235, and then 292 for 2025, another 24%. So this is a little more of the kind of growth we normally see with a growth type of stock and scenario, not as much of the crazy straight up vertical type, you know, things are doubling within a year scenario here. We also have um, the estimates. One is up in the last 30 days for both this year and next year, but nobody's made any changes since that NVIDIA developer conference but we only have three estimates really on this uh, company. So that's a lot less than the number of analysts covering um, the bigger NVIDIA. And estimates doesn't necessarily mean analysts. It just could mean that the same analyst is making more changes. So it shows up as you know three estimates, but there may only be two, one or two even, but probably could be two actual analysts on this um, stock on Zax.com. So that also uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to gauge what is going on in the future with these stocks. But this one is a lot more expensive now. And given the big run up here, um, you know, I, I know I have been asking how much further does it have to go? But when I'm looking at NVIDIA and uh, that's the stock I really want to make a case for. It does have the fundamentals, like I mentioned. It is trading at a, a fairly low historic forward PE for NVIDIA at just 39 times. And these are the things I like to look at and just the consistency. Can it continue to grow in this level we won't know until we know, until it actually does it. But for now, the analysts believe that, yes, this what's going to happen this fiscal year, at least, is looking likely to happen. And so I feel like there is some value still remaining in NVIDIA. 
And I kind of like it here. And that's, you know, without actually even diving in as some of my colleagues would do on the actual, you know, type of chip it's making, what is its competitors, what are the competitors doing, because all those should be in your analysis, but on just a very um, thin top look at NVIDIA, I feel that it does have value here. And there is a case to be made that the stock could still rise higher and that we're not near the type top yet in where the stock could go. Now, I've been keeping track along with many others on, you know, what stocks have been the best performers over the last decade and then certainly over the last 30 years. Um, there's been other analysts who have been tracking the 30 year time period pretty di- diligently on, on Twitter or X as it's now called. And I like looking at this kind of data because it kind of blows by all the arguments that we, um, have a stock that will top necessarily, <laughs> um, because uh, the recent update I saw, which was through October 2023, still had some of the big cap tech names up at the top, as you might expect, as the best performers of the last 30 years, because the last 30 years, that would start in 1993 then. That includes the dot-com era when a lot of these stocks uh, first went IPO, and then it includes the last 10 years after the great financial crisis, when a lot of these stocks did catch another wind. So they've had like two bullish markets in there along with the bear, but we have now reemerged into this bull market. And number one, as of October, 2023, over the 30 year time period is still monster beverage, ticker MNST. A lot of people forget about Monster. Number two is Amazon. It's it's sprung back up into the number two position. AMZN is the ticker. And since its IPO in May 1997 through the end of October 2023, um, It is up 177,354% or annualized of 32.6%. So uh, it just keeps going and it's near new highs again. Number three is Apple, ticker AAPL. And since its IPO in 1980, um, but so we have the full period with this one. It did, it went IPO prior to November 1993. And so since that time, it's up 75,322%. Now, NVIDIA, interestingly, is has leaped up to number four on this list now. And it went IPO in January 1999. And since that IPO, so it doesn't even cover the full 30-year time period, it's up 56,039%, again, putting it into the number four slot as of the end of October 2023. I haven't updated to see what's happening since then, but we know NVIDIA is up again and Apple has been struggling a little bit here in 2024. Um, I'm not sure that's enough to catapult NVIDIA up to number three spot above Apple during that time period, but possibly these are uh, things to look for. But these stocks have had staying power as they've grown sales and earnings equally during that time period. So as a fundamental investor, not even just looking at the chart, I want to look as if that growth is still there to justify buying NVIDIA at 39 times. And for now, for this fiscal year, it looks like that growth is still there. So for those reasons, I'm making a case for buying shares of NVIDIA here at these levels or maybe waiting for a 5% or maybe even a 10% correction in the shares. All stocks correct at some point, even these great big winners of the last 30 years have had significant pullbacks during that time period. So if it makes you feel a little better to get it back um, on a pullback, that's 
you know, how I do like to buy a lot of times when it's going a little bit out of favor, but the um, trend is still your friend on NVIDIA. And as hard as it seems to think like it's had this big run, how can it keep running? The actual fundamentals, as I just mentioned, are still there with NVIDIA and um, I'm kind of liking it here. Like I said, this is kind of surprising for the value stock strategist because normally I should not be liking a stock that's up over 250% in the last year and now trades at 39 times, but I do. So keep this on your short list. Um, you know, there is always dollar cost averaging. You don't have to go all in all at once. Uh, you also will already own it if you own the the triple Q ETF or any of the S&P 500 funds, you will get exposure to it and all the other big cap tech stocks. So it's not like you're not already owning it, but um, NVIDIA looking pretty good here at 39 times. I don't own it and I've never owned it in my personal portfolio. I've only owned it through the major indexes, but maybe even I'm going to put it on my short list here for you know some kind of weakness and maybe getting in on Nvidia finally here myself. So that's Nvidia ticker NVDA. Um, as I mentioned, some of the other stocks, Super Micro Computer. We did take a look at that one. It's a lot more volatile. It's uh, you know smaller market cap. More people kind of messing around in it. But SMCI is the ticker for that one. And I do recommend checking out Dave's great video on whether or not it's too late to buy Supermicro as well, because he was checking out all the charts on that one. And then Vertiv, which I own in my own personal portfolio, ticker VRT, it's red hot too. It's a little more pricey than I would like. And it doesn't have the same growth trajectory as some of the others, but Maybe on a pullback on Vertiv, it might be looking attractive as well. So um, keep an eye on all of these types of stocks because there's more than just these. I decided to just take a look at NVIDIA because it is actually kind of hated on Twitter right now. And that's also sending me a good signal because only you know value investors should not like it because it's not cheap enough for them. But growth investors should still be in it. So as a contrarian investor, which value investors are, I like to see people saying, no, it's overvalued or it's stretched too much. I like to see the suspicion about it because that means everybody's not in it and it doesn't have the bubble characteristics of buy at any price. People are being more cautious and that's a good thing for the stock and for the future of the stock, actually. So keep these things in mind. Uh, I'll be returning again, I'm sure, with another podcast looking at all of these. And be sure to turn into tune into the Value Investor Podcast because we've looked at all these big tech stocks over on that podcast to see if there's any kind of value over there. And I, I recently covered whether or not Warren Buffett should be buying Alphabet um, for his portfolio, because there seemed to be some value there, but it's since rallied a bit since I did that podcast. But be sure to subscribe to both of these podcasts. The only video podcast is The Market Edge, however, and that's found on YouTube. But everything else, you can get all of our podcasts on Apple Podcasts. You can get us on Spotify. We're on Amazon Music. But be sure to get us somewhere, and I'll see you again next week with some more stocks.